In this lecture, we will derive Holder inequality, Cauchy-Shaw's inequality, and Minkowski inequality. These three inequalities are very important as they are used in many branches of pure and applied mathematics. But before deriving these inequalities, we have to consider the LP space, which is an important metric space. It is necessary to talk about the elements of this space because uh, it will be used in deriving the Holder inequality. Let P be greater than or equal to 1 be a fixed real number. Then, by definition, each element of this space is a sequence of numbers. For example, this sequence can be x is equal to xi j, where j is a natural number. Therefore, this sequence is equal to the sequence of xi1, xi2, and up to so on. And these numbers, xi j, they are real numbers and they can also be the complex numbers such that the series xi1 absolute value of whole raised to the power p plus absolute value xi2 raised to the power p and up to so on this series converges which simply means that when we will evaluate this sum then this sum is a convergent sum that is it must be less than infinity therefore i have written below that the sum over j is equal to 1 to infinity applied on xi j absolute value power p is less than infinity and the metric is defined by d of x and y is equal to the summation over j equal to 1 to infinity applied on the absolute value of xi j minus eta j power p and whole raised to the power 1 divided by p. We will prove in the next lecture that this space is a metric space. But for now, we are going to prove the Holder inequality. Uh, so let me derive the Holder inequality. This inequality was first derived by O. Holder and he derived it in 1889. So all the first let we take two sequences xi j tilde and eta j tilde such that the sum of the series xi j absolute value whole raised to the power p where j varies from 1 to infinity this is equal to 1 and <coughs> summation over j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of eta j tilde whole raised to the power q is equal to 1 and there should also be tilde xi j tilde where p and q are conjugate exponents P and Q are conjugate exponents. These were considered in the previous lecture. It simply means that the sum of the reciprocals of P and Q is equal to 1. <coughs> in the next step, uh, you have to set 
alpha is equal to the absolute value of xij tilde and beta equal to absolute value of eta j tilde so since p and q are conjugate exponents and obviously we can see that alpha and beta are positive because they are equal to the absolute values which is always a positive number therefore alpha and beta are positive so that we can apply the inequality considered in the previous lecture therefore we have alpha multiplied with beta is less than or equal to alpha raised to the power p divided with p plus beta raised to the power q divided with q set the values of alpha and beta here alpha is equal to xi j tilde and multiplied with absolute value of eta j tilde it is less than or equal to value of alpha that is absolute value of xi j tilde and whole power p divide with p plus absolute value of eta j tilde par p sorry q divide with q next you have to take the sum over j so taking the summation over j on both sides you will get and before applying this sum note that for the case of numbers absolute value of a multiplied with b is equal to absolute value of a multiplied with absolute value of b so therefore the previous inequality uh, can be written as the left hand side of this inequality is xi j tilde eta j tilde whole rest sorry no power no summation is required i'm sorry this is less than or equal to xi j tilde par p divide with p the right hand right hand side has to be written as it is now you have to take the sum over j equal to 1 to infinity apply this sum on both of these sides xi j tilde and eta j tilde this is less than or equal to the summation j equal to 1 to infinity xi j tilde par p and divide with p since there is no involvement of subscript j in p therefore we don't need to apply the sum over p <coughs> Similarly, the sum needs not to be applied on Q. And note that we have put 
the summation of fix i j tilde power p is equal to 1 and similarly the summation of fix i j tilde power q is equal to 1 therefore the right hand side is equal to 1 divided by p plus 1 divided by q and since p and q are conjugate exponents therefore this is equal to 1 thus overall the summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of fix i j tilde multiplied with eta j tilde is less than or equal to 1 now we have obtained this inequality mark it as inequality number 1 because it will be used in further process in the next step we will take two elements from the LP space now we take an element X which is equal to the sequence of xij's belonging from LP and another element from LP space that is y which is equal to eta j and it is also belonging from LP and we put or we set what we will uh, put we will put xi j tilde is equal to xi j divide with xi k absolute value p where uh, you have to apply the sum over k varying from 1 to infinity and whole power is 1 divide with p similarly we also define xi sorry eta j eta j tilde this is equal to eta j divide with in the same manner as we previously done with xi j tilde mm, let this be m equal to 1 to infinity applied on the absolute value of eta m power p absolute value and whole sorry power q and whole power is 1 divided with q uh, now we will have to check uh, that if these substitutions are correct or not note that initially we took xi j and eta j sequences such that this series were equal to 1 so now we have to check that these series are equal to 1 in case our in case of our substitutions so let me do it in some other page note that xi j tilde is set to be equal to xi j divided with xi k absolute value of p and the summation i'm not writing the variation of this sum and whole power is 1 over p you have to find out the absolute value of xi j power p and you have to apply uh, the sum over uh, this uh, numbers j varying from 1 to infinity so the first thing is you have to take the absolute value so absolute value of xi j is equal to xi j tilde sorry is equal to xi j absolute value divided with the absolute value of the denominator and note that the denominator is positive and when you take the uh, absolute value on positive number then by definition of absolute value there is no effect on such 
a positive number so the denominator will remain as it is whole rest of the power 1 over p if you need the reason let me teach you note that xi k is a number which can be real or complex but if we take the absolute value of this number then this is always non-negative according to the definition of absolute value and if we take the power p of such a non-negative number then the result is again non-negative greater than or equal to zero and if we add up such numbers infinitely many times then the sum is again non-negative so it means that the denominator is non-negative and further if we take whole power 1 divided with p then the power of 0 0 power 1 over p is again equal to 0 so it means that this quantity is greater than or equal to 0 that is non-negative it needs not to be 0 if we want that xi j is defined so it means that the denominator is a positive number and when you apply the absolute value on a positive number a then we get back the same number a therefore we will get back the denominator when we apply the absolute value this means that this number is unaffected by the uh, by applying the absolute value so it is not required to use the absolute value in the denominator hopefully you have understood this concept next proceed further apply the power p on both sides the power can be distributed on numerator and denominator this p in the denominator uh, this p in the power of denominator simply gets cancelled with this p so we are left with this thing in the next step you have to take the sum over j varying from 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j power p is equal to xi j sorry here it was tilde summation of absolute value of xi j power p where j varies from 1 to infinity and note that in the denominator there is no involvement of j there is the involvement of k so uh, this sum cannot be in, uh, applied there therefore the denominator will remain as it is and note that k varies from 1 to infinity j also varies from 1 to infinity this means that j and k are similar things therefore we can write here the number j and therefore it means that j is a dummy variable so that the denominator and numerator are similar and therefore this is equal to 1 so absolute value of power uh, sorry absolute value of xi j tilde power p when you apply the sum on this uh, thing then you get a series which is uh, whose sum is equal to 1 
So similarly, you can prove that the summation xi j tilde power q where j varies from 1 to infinity is again equal to 1. So let me move back. So which means that such that xi j absolute value power p the summation varying from j equal to 1 to infinity is equal to 1 and the summation j equal to 1 to infinity eta j tilde whole power q it is again 1 so when this case is true I mean to say that xi j and eta j tilde are such that these series are equal to 1 so we can apply this inequality number 1 if those series were not equal to 1 if those sums were not equal to 1 that we could not apply this inequality so we can apply this inequality this inequality so we can apply we can use inequality in the relation 1 so put the values of xi j and eta j there you will get the summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j put the value of xi j xi j is equal to xi j tilde sorry it is equal to xi j divided with summation over k equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi k whole power p and this whole power is 1 over p similarly uh, you also uh, you will also put the value of xi j tilde in in the inequality number one left hand side is under process m equal to one to infinity absolute value of xi m whole power p sorry q and this whole raises to 1 over q whole absolute value is less than or equal to 1 separate the sum and you also need to separate the absolute value and note that this absolute value can be separated over numerator and denominator but when you will uh, will when you will separate it in the numerator sorry in the denominator then obviously it has no effect on the denominator terms because those denominator terms are positive as explained earlier so xi j sorry summation over j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j eta j absolute value and this sum cannot be applied on the denominator terms k equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi k power p whole power 1 over p 
this is less than or equal to 1. Since the denominator is positive, so we can multiply both sides of this inequality with the denominator without uh, reversing the sign of inequality. So by doing so, we get j equal to 1 to infinity. We are just multiplying both uh, sides of this inequality by the denominator and we will get this thing to be less than or equal to summation k equal to 1 to infinity xi k power p and whole power 1 over p multiplied with summation uh, m equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of eta m whole power q and whole power raises to 1 over q again since k varies from 1 to infinity m varies from 1 to infinity and j also varies from 1 to infinity it means that they can be interchanged which simply means that k and m are dummy variables uh, so we can write this thing j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value xi j eta j is less than or equal to xi sorry summation where j varies from 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j power p whole power 1 over p multiplied with summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi m sorry xi j power q whole power 1 over q and name this inequality as the inequality number 2 this inequality is called the holders inequality so finally we have derived the holder inequality which is holder inequality Quality, where p and q are conjugate exponents conjugate exponents and p is fixed greater than or equal to 1 this is called the Holder's inequality. If we put p is equal to q is equal to 2, then we get the cauchy shores inequality. If p is equal to q is equal to 2, if these both are 2, then the summation j varying from 1 to infinity applied on absolute value of xi j and uh, multiplied with eta j absolute value whole power 1 over 2 this is less than or equal to the summation varying from j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j uh, power 2 and whole power 1 over 2 that is square root 2 similarly square root of summation varying from j equal to 1 to infinity applied on xi j power q sorry square this is called the cauchy shores inequality
we will now derive the Minkowski inequality. If P is greater than or equal to 1, then Minkowski inequality is summation j equal to 1 to infinity applied on xi j plus eta j absolute value whole raised to the power p and whole power is 1 divided by p is less than or equal to summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j whole power p and whole power is p plus summation j equal to 1 varying from 1 to infinity and applied on the absolute value of eta j and whole power p and whole power 1 divided by p and then this is called the Minkowski inequality note that if we set p is equal to 1 then this inequality is trivial uh, by using the triangle inequality for numbers so we will consider p greater than 1 suppose that xi j plus zeta j is equal to omega j and apply the absolute value on both of the sides and then apply the triangle inequality of numbers and then multiply and divide the left hand side with xi j absolute value whole power p the right hand side will remain as it is this can be written as omega j whole raised to the power 1 minus p multiplied with the absolute value of omega j whole power p this is less than or equal to the right hand side has to remain unchanged in the next step you have to divide with this factor the first factor on the left hand side so that you will obtain xi j plus eta j absolute values divided with omega j power 1 minus p bring it on the numerator so that you will get the absolute value of p minus 1 apply the distributive law you get absolute value of xi j power sorry multiplied with absolute value omega j power p minus 1 plus absolute value of eta j multiplied with absolute value omega j power p minus 1 and then take the summation and distribute it apply the summation on both sides summation over j varying from 1 to infinity the summation can be distributed so distribute it here
and then uh, mark it as equation or the inequality number um, any inequality inequality b and consider the first uh, term in the summation on the right hand side the first summation is x i j and absolute value of omega j power p minus 1 and apply the holder inequality here look back into holder inequality and apply it here you will get j equal to 1 to infinity first term whole power 1 over p plus summation applied on the second term whole power q and overall power is 1 over q so this implies that summation absolute value of x i j absolute value of omega j power p minus 1 is less than or equal to summation x i j power p whole power 1 over p plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of omega j whole power q multiplied with p minus 1 and whole power is 1 divided by q note that p minus 1 multiplied with q is equal to p because we know that 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1 p and q are uh, conjugate exponents this implies that p plus q is equal to pq and this further implies that p is equal to sorry q is equal to no p is equal to pq minus q and take q as common you have q multiplied with p minus 1 is equal to p so uh, therefore the above inequality becomes q multiplied with p minus 1 is replaced with p and then uh, mark it as any equation or you don't need to mark it consider the second sum and apply the same steps sorry here it is eta j is less than or equal to apply the holder inequality eta j power q sorry eta j power p whole power 1 over p multiplied with uh, sorry there is a mistake when you are applying the holder inequality there is not no sum there is product in the previous step there was a little mistake and then multiplied with the same thing will be obtained uh, in the last factor omega j power p whole raised to the power 1 over q 
and put these two inequalities back into inequality number B you will get summation j equal to 1 to infinity omega j power p absolute value omega j power p is equal to is less than or equal to xi j sorry absolute value summation j is equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j whole power p whole power 1 over p multiplied with summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of omega j power p and whole power 1 over uh, q plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of eta j power p whole power 1 over p multiplied with summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of omega j power p whole power 1 over q take the last factor on the right hand side as common you will get omega j sorry summation j equal to 1 to infinity power p whole power 1 over p plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity eta j power p and whole power is 1 over p and whole thing is multiplied with the common factor the common factor is whole power 1 divided with q in the next step divide both sides of this inequality with this common taken factor so on the left hand side you have j equal to 1 to infinity summation applied on omega j power p divided with summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of j power p and whole power is 1 over q <clears throat> in the next step uh, sorry you have to write the right hand side the residue in the right hand side is summation j equal to 1 to infinity applied on xi j power p and whole raised to the power 1 over p plus summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of eta j power p and whole raised to the power 1 divided by p bases on the left hand side are same so whole power becomes after applying the basic rules of mathematics exponent rules power on the numerator is 1 and on the denominator the power with the same base is 1 divided by q when it is brought upward on the numerator its power becomes negative 1 over q as you all know from basic mathematics and this is less than or equal to the right hand side has to be written as it is whole power 1 over p plus j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value eta j power p whole power 1 over p now this whole power becomes summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value omega j and whole power is p multiplied with 1 minus 1 over q so that 
you have this thing is less than or equal to and again the right hand side remains unchanged xi j power p whole power 1 over p plus eta j power p whole power 1 over p now note that p and q are conjugate exponents this means that 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1 and from this <coughs> 1 over p is equal to 1 minus 1 over q and if you multiply both of these sides with the p then you will get p is sorry p multiplied with 1 minus 1 over q is equal to 1 therefore we have uh, on the left hand side the whole power raises to just 1 and this is summation j equal to 1 to infinity absolute value of xi j plus eta j sorry a p has to be brought back sorry in the previous step i have made a mistake this power p needs not to be taken outside p will be written there and the whole power is 1 minus 1 over q and from this equation that is highlighted here 1 over p is equal to 1 minus 1 over q so 1 minus 1 over q is simply replaced with 1 divided by p now since xi j sorry omega j is said to be equal to xi j plus eta j therefore put its value back absolute value of uh, xi j plus eta j whole power is p and the power of this whole term is 1 divided by p and this is less than or equal to the right hand side will be unchanged and this gives you the required Minkowski inequality hopefully you have completely understood this lecture this was very important lecture absolute value of theta j power p and whole raised to the power 1 over p thanks for watching